Welcome back to the Zen Trap. I'm one of your two hosts, Yogi LG. Zen P. The mission here at the Zen Trap Podcast is to inspire and empower people to continuously seek internal peace to maximize your personal potential. We got a special episode today, a ZTP Zen Trap Perspective. P, tell them what we got today. Well, we got a great ZTP video review for you today. As we mentioned, the topic for the month is parental relationships. This is right on time. Breakfast Club just did an interview with this author, two-time best-selling author, Nedra Glover Tawab. I hope I said that correctly. Um, like I said, she is a two times New York Times bestselling author. Her latest book is entitled Drama Free, A Guide to Managing Unhealthy Family Relationships. So as I mentioned, we are going to be reviewing her Breakfast Club interview and just telling you about that. So uh, Yogi LG, why don't you start us off for people that haven't seen the interview, kind of what would you give an overall explanation of how the interview went with this Again, two-time best-selling author, and she also is a therapist. Absolutely. Um, I thought it was a super cool interview. Ultimately, Breakfast Cup, so Charlemagne, um, DJ Envy, super cool interview, kind of chill, relaxed. But ultimately, this is the follow-up book to her book called Setting Boundaries, I think, was her first book. And the reason she said she kind of even did this book was to kind of talk about, like, people were saying like, yeah, how do you set boundaries with your family and people that you're close to? And so since our topic is parental relationships, those are the people that it's kind of hardest, at least for, in my experience, I've experienced harder to set boundaries with um, your parents than anybody. But this video just kind of talks about the key points out of um, her book and kind of how you manipulate, you know, trying to navigate those family relationships that can be sensitive or you want to keep those relationships, but you also want to understand how you set your boundaries and how you navigate through that and still be healthy as a person. So that's kind of what I got from the video. What about you? Yeah, I think that's a great explanation, interviewing her about her thoughts on the book. I thought during the interview, which right, wrong, and different, I thought Charlemagne and DJ Envy took advantage of being able to ask personal questions that they struggle with maybe in their relationship yeah. with their children to try and get it by so they kind of got a free session a free therapy session <laughs> live on air hopefully it could benefit other people so i thought i thought that was a good um time and point for them and then i thought she did a good job of just explaining her perspective on it answering questions from a therapist's point of view and just from her being a parent or, uh, you know, uh, a child of someone just from her being a person's point of view as well. So I thought it was a great, uh, timely topic. And the book just clearly hits on what we're trying to talk about for the month. So I thought it was a good interview to get a good basis of somewhere to start. Um, what was something kind of unique or special that you got got from the interview? Ultimately, I think uh, one of the, the most special things that I really resonated with and this is not necessarily something new that I haven't heard before, um, but ultimately the stop, f stop the forgive and forget culture, because we're we're not really forgetting, and sometimes we're not all the way even forgiving, and so I I resonate with that because I try to do that right. I try to forgive and forget. Uh, in a sense, when I say forget, it's like I leave that person that did that thing to me or offended me in that way. I leave that version of the person in the past and forget that they exist. I'm trying to take you as a new person and who you are for today. Um, so I want to be able to forget that that person even existed. Uh, but it is pretty tough. And so um, I realizing that it takes a toll on you and kind of how she was just talking about how it can affect you uh, to to you trying to forget you can't even all the way forgive and so that culture or movement may not be the healthiest way for you to process something so that was something that was kind of really uh stuck with me that was kind of unique that I was like oh man that's pretty dope uh did you find anything like new or unique in the video that you felt like oh this is uh resonates with me or I didn't find anything new per se uh I like how they discussed because I believe this too that you don't necessarily have to be uh, 
friends or have some strong bond with everybody in your family just because you're a family and depending on how you grew up your nature that doesn't make people obligated to your time your energy and stuff like that what it's other factors it's just not one context that this is your family you must do this this and this because it's your family so that wasn't unique to me but I think that's something that a lot of people that I know struggle with is this is my family, so I'm obligated to do X, Y, and Z. Now, there's some stuff I'm not going to say that you're obligated to do, because I don't think you're obligated to do nothing, per se, but... Not a damn thing. Um, I, I think that's one of the big things that, that people struggle with that they talked about. And even how you can love somebody and not like somebody. I can love Oof. you for who you are in my Come life, what you do for me, who you are as a person. Now you're getting into my favorite bars right like, here. You're getting into my favorite oh, okay, bars right well, yeah, here. Go, no, no. go ahead and get That's into good, that. but keep going. Well, no, I was just saying to me that was something that you don't hear a lot of people. I haven't heard a lot of people per se say. I think when people talk about their perspective on family, it's not a lot of people that talk about in a clear, concise way of still having respect and love for your family. And you can do that from afar. And, and say, I love them, but I may not like this type of person or that type of person. And again, like I said, you can go ahead and get into the uh, bar section. Because Favorite bar, that was, that was one of them. That, you know, you can love your family, but you don't got to like everybody. And you're not going to like everybody. Certain personalities match up, mash up, and they just click well. I can absolutely name three, four, five people in my family that our personalities just vibe. Not saying that uh, anything else is wrong with the people that I don't vibe with, but the naturally my personality with these few people just vibe, and that, and I think that was okay. Um, the other thing she she mentioned that I thought was dope is that the norm could still be unhealthy. So because the norm is to treat certain people in your family this way or treat your parents, do this with your parents, listen to everything your parents say, no matter how old you get, or that's how we've been raised. That's culturally what we were told to do. Respect your elders, whatever. That could be the norm, but still be unhealthy. And we have to be able to kind of recognize that and say like, yeah, I know that's how we grew up. But I'm choosing to take a different path in life. I'm choosing to live my best life and be healthy and do things that make me a well-rounded uh, and at-peace individual. And I'm no longer going to do that. And that, that you got to get comfortable with that. That's tough. But you got to get comfortable with that. What yeah, about you? that's real tough. Uh, Any favorite just, bars? I like that one a lot. Even what you're saying where trauma and chaos could be the norm. But you choosing to do something different. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, we talked about it in the Zen Trap chat. I like how breaking down favorites and how you're supposed to, you know, treat your children and things like that. I, I like at this age, I'm getting real big, more so on vocabulary. I know in my past, I was not a big stickler on words mm. mattering or yes. having to expand my vocabulary that much just because to me, even though things, even as complex as things are, it's simple rooted words and stuff that you can use as simple categories. I think even as we, as I've learned things in school, I've learned that, oh, that's just a bigger way of saying this. That's a bigger word. That's a bigger way of, it's always kind of root words. So I've always liked to almost essentially, I don't even want to call it dumbing things down anymore, but just making it more in layman terms, as they say. And I don't even know if that's a bad saying. Mm -hmm. um, probably should look that up. But I say all that to say, Vocabulary means thing. I like the part where she corrected DJ Envy a little bit, yeah. where he was feeling like I'm forcing my kids to have a relationship. And she's like, well, what you're describing is you're not forcing them to do it. You are fostering mm -hmm. an environment for them to be able to bond more. You're putting them in situations so that they are capable of building a bond. You are fostering it. Now, what forcing would look like is this, and she goes to explain it. Forcing may be they're rebelling, saying, I don't want my little brother to come with me to this event. And you are telling me, it don't matter what you want. He has to go. You're saying, hey, oh, if you're going, take your brother. It's no pushback. Cool. Now you're fostering. Hey, he wants to learn how to do what you're doing. You can go out there, show him, or at least let him be in the environment. So, again, just changing something, again, simple to change the word choice, but also not simple to do if you're not aware of the word choice, if you're not speaking to somebody. So 
I thought that was big on just even how you could benefit from talking to people in those conversations to learn different terminology for you may even be doing the right thing and you're just calling it something yeah. uh, using the wrong word choice and that small thing can have a big effect on the family dynamic and narrative on how you look at it so I'm real big in to expanding my vocabulary more to make sure that if I'm trying to start believing more in manifestation and specific word choice that words mean things words do have powers and how i'm describing the situation and the outlook on it can have a huge impact on it so i'm learning a lot in those different types absolutely and i just to piggyback off you and i always plug this when i can there's a show atlas of the heart Brene brown does where she talks about literally she it's like five episodes of just giving verbiage to different feelings that you're having and how important verbiage is uh, to making sure that you can actually fully feel what you are feeling and understand what you're feeling. So I think you saying expanding your vocabulary and I thought that was a, a great section of the video as well. Um, what is something that you would share with your loved ones from this book, from this video, excuse me. Like something that you would say like, hey, you need to watch this. And it was a section if you had to send them a time clip like, hey, this is probably something that'll be good for you. Um, What I would share with my loved ones is. I think. They didn't mention it inside of the video, so I'm not going to mention that one. Let me think of something inside of the actual video. Do you have one? Uh, yeah, I got something, but we, we kind of hit on it earlier, uh, talking about different personalities um, and how you're going to vibe with different people and that being okay. I think that's kind of, if I could have like a family reunion with my family and put something on the board, it would be like, it's okay that we may have little groups inside our family that connect well. Ultimately, as long as we have love for one another, we don't have to like and draw to one another i think that is something that i would love to share uh with my family i can respect you from a distance i can show you compassion from a distance i can do a lot of things from a distance and just because we're family and you can create your own family within like within your family or even like friends become almost like flint like you can create your own tribe and i don't feel like anybody should take offense to that for sure i would share that one with friends for sure mm -hmm. about creating your own family yeah. with my family specifically i think i would share more along what we talked about with the fostering um not feeling like you have to force people to do things i think in my family we may not do a lot of stuff such as family reunions on both sides of my family or other things because people and this is just a guess people may feel like it may have no effect or it may be forcing people to do or whatever the reason is. But to me, that would be fostering an environment for us to get to know each other, for us to meet cousins that I haven't met before or cousins who I've only seen pictures of, for us just having those type of events. So somebody fostering that type of environment of saying, of being what you want to see. And that goes through anything you kind of want in life. So if you want if you're looking to date people or, or love somebody, you want to be that person that you want to date first. Or if you're looking mm, for yeah. um, a relationship from a, a person in your family, just like you're saying, well, my phone is always open. Are you calling them? Are you doing so doing what you want? So I would recommend the, the fostering aspect of being the change you want to see and just not having expectations on what you're trying to foster either. So if you say, I want us to have a family call once a month, if only two people join the family call for the first six months, three months, whatever, that's fine. That's, that's, that's fostering it and not forcing people. You are letting people know, hey, this is what we're doing once a month. A lot of people aren't joining right now, but if you would like to join, here's the link. It's always there. I can show you how to use it. I would share that with my family about just trying to foster and using those foundational building blocks that we can build on stuff instead of just thinking we got to get it all at once. We got to do everything at once. We got to fix everything at once. I need to hear everything at once. I don't think that's necessary yeah. and, and it's unrealistic. Absolutely. I, I could 100 percent agree. Um, is there anything in this this video that you felt like would, would change you? You would take from this and uh, kind of move forward. And I'm going to definitely use this. I know you talked about fostering with with other people, but is it something that like impacts you? Um, did it target something that you like specifically struggle with? Um, no, it didn't. Nothing resonated with me to the point that I felt like 
I struggle with per se, but I'm not aware of what I'm not aware of. So I always try and take that with a grain of salt. But I did, again, for me, the big takeaway for me is just I focus on word choice and communication. I, um, I like when she was talking to Charlemagne that I'm looking more so, especially because she's a therapist as well, I take that with a grain of salt too, that she knows certain techniques and, and knows um, how to talk to people as well, that when Charlemagne was explaining how his child feels like the third one is a favorite, and he's mm-hmm. kind of trying to nip that in the bud. So he's getting, a, like I said, he's getting a little free therapy for that. She didn't assume that, oh, Charlemagne, this is, this is exactly what it is. She kind of let him speak. He would say something. She would say, well, ask questions to kind of probe. Well, he was like, no, I don't think it's that. I think some people when communicating will just be like, okay, you just don't know what it is. Like it is that you just don't know what it is. So I, I like, I take away the communicational techniques and aspects of it, of helping somebody, even if you, even if you feel like, you know what the answer is, helping them come to the point where they, they, where can, they, say they, they can see yeah. it. So yeah. I, I take little stuff like that away from it. What about you? Uh, my my biggest probably takeaway was just allowing your parents grace, uh, and we kind of talked about that in the chat the other week. But just like allowing your parents the grace that you extend other people, like recognizing that when they were raising you, they could have been going through super traumatic things that you may be going through now, and you could understand like, oh, now I get like my mom was trying to do I don't know she was going through a horrible breakup. And when I went through my horrible breakup, I couldn't imagine supporting somebody else or or doing whatever, right? Empathizing with with their situation as just being humans and going through this journey in life. And so allowing your parents grace was something that they hit on the video. And that was just, it it just resonates with me every time. uh, Because I want to do that with everyone. I want to allow as much grace and extend as much grace as I can. But, you know, within reason, of course. So I think that definitely stuck with me and I, I will continue to do that. I, well, even with that last part, you said what? What's in, within reason? Mm. What does that even mean? Because I think yeah. you can broadly throw that out there. You can. You can. I think ultimately, when I say within reason, it's it can't be at the expense of myself, mm. right? If I continue to stand you grace and it is affecting me, impacting me negatively, then there's some boundary that I have to set with that, uh, with that grace. Like, hey, I'm gonna have to keep you at a distance because you need too much grace, and I ain't got that much to extend. So I think that's what I what I mean by to, you know to a certain extent. I feel that. Um, did you find something in this video that you feel like I could benefit from or grow from? Um, honestly, man, like I, I, I think, you, and you hit on it, and I was like, man, he kind of already on it, which is great. But fostering those relationships, so I know, like, your relationship with your father, like, sometimes you feel like, all right, I can foster it, he can foster it, he not fostering it, why should I foster it? Right. And so I think that's kind of maybe like a, a one that I would kind of give to you is that maybe you take, I don't know, six months out of your your whole entire life and say, I'm going to commit myself for the six months to trying to really foster a relationship. And if that gets into a snowball effect and it turns into something that we could do consistently, then great. If not, then, hey, I gave effort to try to foster that relationship and we can kind of keep it where it is. And it ain't no big deal. That would probably be maybe something that I, I would say. um I thought about when I watched the video for you. What about you? Anything for me? Yeah. So I was well, good. Yeah, no, I received that. I appreciate that. That's definitely something I can consider and do. Um, I think you spoke on it as well, uh, briefly about normalizing how things were. Um, I think you're learning from that, but I still think you could benefit from, honestly, speaking to a therapist, I think is only, I don't think you should, I think we, we in our friend group, we have a lot of friends and even family members that we deem as friends and family members who give great advice who, Mm -hmm. um, but to me, they still aren't. Uh, unbiased parties because they would still have your best interests at heart. They still are thinking about you first as a person, yeah. what somebody has done for, for, you know, 
they still are considering you as not necessarily not like you're the problem, but they can not truly be unbiased mm. in, in that situation. Agreed. Agreed. So I, I think you have a lot of n- not, I can't compare yours to other people's, but I think you have re- heard about and received a lot of like family trauma and stuff like that. And you've normalized it mm. and you don't, you don't speak to people about it unless it's absolutely necessary. So it's hard for me to even say, like, I don't know how you are even truly dealing with it other than just uh, pushing it down and just saying, like, this is this is what happens. This has been happening. It's not a big deal. Normalize, you keep yeah. saying it's not a big deal, but it, sound, it, sound, it sounds like a big deal. You even casually talking about it. So I, I think... I think, again, that's why I would say it would need to be with a therapist. Talking with a therapist and unpacking a lot of that can make you feel a lot lighter. Because if you're being a support person for people in your family and your friends and all of this, I think it's going to be a lot of times when you're uh, imploding on the inside and you you may think people not noticing it or even if they do notice it. It's just, again, it's one of those things. Everybody has it when you could be talking to somebody about it, getting it out and feeling a lot lighter. I received that. I absolutely received that. I will say even uh, I was watching actually another interview with the same lady and they were talking about uh, how some people normalize their trauma and they just think, oh, that's what just what happens. Like, but and then to even add on to that, she was talking about how may, your I think there's a survey or something that you could take. And she was like, your number may be eight out of ten on this survey. It's kind of talking about the traumatic things you may have gone through, and but the impact could be a one over two. It just depends on how you receive it. And so sometimes I think the impact is low, but I don't really know until maybe I go talk to somebody and I do feel lighter. So I, I absolutely receive that, and I. I I will keep that in mind for sure. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, any last words or thing you want to leave? Ultimately, like this is the conversation they have is general around all general family relationships. Um, but I, I think it's a good video to go watch. Um, if you want to get her book, Drama Free, I would recommend that as well. From things I've heard, um, it's an excellent book. And uh, I think, Working on your relationships with your parents, with your family, realizing that just because you don't live in that household anymore doesn't mean you don't have to nurture and foster good relationships uh, as you continue through life. I think that is extremely important. Um, I would advise everyone to do it. So that that would be my last words. What about you? Um, Same. Same as you. Uh, time is undefeated. Time is Come your biggest now. asset and resource and liability. So uh, recognize that your parents aren't going to be here forever. You aren't going to be here forever. Not just your parents. I don't mean they going first. You aren't going to be here forever either. Yes. So if you want or desire that relationship, make yourself available and do the work. Uh, I Again, the, the common theme I, I like to say or am on right now is whatever you want to see out of something it has to start with you first whatever that is whatever it is you want it needs to start with discovering it in you first if you want more love be more loving if you want to be heard more listen more whatever it is you want do more of it and starting with yourself um you're gonna attract it for sure yeah so this has been another ztp zen trap perspective i'm one of your two hosts zen p yogi lg again topic of the month is parental relationships Leave something in the comments. Please. Let us know if Talk there's something us. you want to see or something you would like to discuss. Uh, and we'll keep it going. Can't do nothing else. Protect your peace. And protect your energy. It's the Zen Trap. We out.